Let me show you how we can use Lightroom to add contrast to our images and make them pop. As always, feel free to follow along this tutorial by downloading the raw file from the link in the description of the video. And now let's begin. And as always, we're going to start things in the basic panel. So let's expand it. The first thing I want to do for this shot is to change the profile. I'm going to choose to be landscape because this will bring up the base saturation. Other than that, this has nothing to do with the contrast at this point. But for the next step, let's focus on giving this image punch. The very first thing I'm noticing here is the sky. It's super bright and we don't have much details. I want to have some visible cloud structure in here. For that, I'm going to drop the highlights. I'm going to drop them quite heavily, as you can see. And what this will do is it will reveal a lot more of these clouds in here, making the whole sky portion more interesting this way. Of course, dropping the highlights like that, the sky does become darker and thus we're kind of losing contrast. But I first want to reveal a detail and then add back contrast to the image. My next thought is this image should be darker. For that reason, I'm going to bring down the shadows, making the darker parts of the image even darker. This will help with the contrast, but we need to be really, really careful to not underexpose the very darkest parts of the image. And therefore, we always need to pay close attention to the histogram because this will indicate if there's clipping in the darker or brighter parts of the image. Just like now, this pink arrow right here shows a little bit of clipping on the far left side of the image. But at this point, that's not a big deal because we can fix that using the blacks slider. So I'm going to bring up the blacks a little bit. And with that, I just want to fix the clip parts in the darker areas. And just like that, they are gone. Of course, again, raising the blacks will result in less contrast overall. But since we have heavily dropped the shadows, it doesn't matter that much. Now we have adjusted the highlights, the shadows and the blacks. We still have the whites slider left. And with that, we can add a lot more punch to the image simply by raising it. This will make the brighter areas brighter. But again, we need to pay close attention to the histogram. We don't want to introduce clipping. And I think right here we are at a good spot. Okay, that's looking good so far. Let me show you the before and after comparison so you can see what we have achieved by just adjusting four sliders in the basic panel of Lightroom. Now let's see what we can do on top. What I'd like to do is to bring up the texture for a little more sharpness. Then we can use the clarity slider, raise it a bit to increase the midtones contrast. And I can bring up the dehaze slider, which will just generally improve the overall contrast. Of course, I also want to bring up the vibrance to make this image a little more colorful. And while we're at it, let's also bring up the saturation. Okay, and that's the image after the basic adjustments. Again, let's compare to before. It looks much, much better with much stronger contrast and more intense colors. Now that we have done the basic adjustments, let's focus on a few areas locally with masking. So let's open up the masking panel. And the first thing I want to do is to make the mountain in the back stand out a little more. Therefore, I'm going to use the new landscape mask. You might think you want to choose mountains here. As you can see, we are selecting the mountain, but we're also selecting the forest in the foreground, which is a bit annoying. So I'm going to choose the natural ground selection. Let's click on create mask. We're still selecting more than we want, but we have an easier time cleaning up the selection. I just need to click on subtract. Let's choose a linear gradient and I'm going to drag it up like this. Or we could also subtract the brush and just clean it up like that. And here we have a perfect selection for the mountain in the distance. Now what I want to do to make it pop, the mountain itself is a little bit darker than the sky. So I'm going to further increase the darkness of the mountain to make it pop. So I'm going to bring up the contrast. You will see this will make it darker and thus it will be much more noticeable in front of these bright clouds. I'm also going to bring up the temperature a bit since I think the mountain looks a little bit too bluish, but that's looking great. Then let me use another landscape mask. This time I want to target the water. Let's select it and click on create mask. Lightroom does have some issues properly selecting the water, especially with those blades of grass looking out of it. I'm going to fine tune the selection a bit. I'm using a linear gradient just to get rid of a few parts here. I'm also going to subtract a radial gradient specifically for these grass blades on the left side. I think that should be enough. Now with this selection, I'm going to add more punch to the water and that is really, really simple. All I need to do is to bring up the whites and look what happens. 
instantly it's looking much much better i can also bring up the highlights just need to be careful again to not introduce any clipping of course physically this might not make sense since the water becomes a little bit too bright but i don't really care about those natural looks what i want to do as well for the reflection is to introduce some texture and this will help making everything look sharper all right beautiful then let's focus a little on these yellow flowers i'm going to start with a new linear gradient covering them like this then i'm going to subtract a color range mask and i'm going to click on those yellow flowers with that color range mask eyedropper what i'm going to do now is to make the foreground darker except for these yellow flowers and in turn we will make them pop so all i need to do is to bring down the exposure just like this and these yellow flowers become way more visible this way okay now there's not much left to do let me create a sky mask i do want to add a little more contrast to the sky so i'm going to simply use the contrast slider here wonderful then there's one more mask i want to create and that's for these highlights in the forest so let's see i want to start with another select landscape mask let me choose the mountains let's click create mask and i'm going to subtract using the brush so we don't need the forest that lies in the shadows i just want to affect the brighter highlights of the forest on the right side so i think that's a pretty good selection what i'm going to do next is to increase the exposure making that part of the forest brighter we are kind of making the light that is hitting the trees more intense this way i'm also going to slightly raise the shadows and i want the light to feel warmer so i'm going to bring up the temperature perfect and that's the image after the masking adjustments let me show you how it looked like before to after much better again big transformation now we can focus a little on the color grading and within the color grading there will be more things with which we can fine tune the contrast so let's open up the color mixer and right away let's start with the luminance here we can target the yellow luminance and bring it up this will again make the lights in the forest on the right side brighter just need to be careful to not introduce any overexposure but that's looking great i'm also going to bring down the blue luminance which will make the sky darker now i'm gonna head over into the saturation tab i want to boost these warmer tones of the image so i'm going to bring up a yellow and i'm also going to bring up green and let's drop the blue saturation because i really don't like the blue tones of the sky in this image okay i'm also going to head into the hue panel and i want to change the yellow hue bringing it down slightly just to make the light on the forest a little warmer this way okay nice then we can also use some split toning through the color grading panel to not only add some creative colors but also boost the contrast let's start with the highlights of course we want to keep the highlights warm so let's add up the hue i'm going with the color in the yellow range and i'm going to bring up the saturation quite a bit actually let me bring down the hue i do want to introduce a more orange like tint right around here and after adjusting hue and saturation we can make use of the luminance slider which will affect the brightness of the highlights so we don't want to make it darker we want to make it brighter to add contrast i'm going to drag out the luminance slider for that and again pay close attention to the histogram to not overexpose but that's looking good already then let's head over into the midtones again i'm going with a very warm color tone somewhere around here let's bring up the saturation just a little bit and then let's play around with the luminance again i'm bringing up the luminance which will make the midtones of the image brighter just like this all right and i'm also going to head into the shadows here i want to work with a bit of color contrast that means i'm going to choose a cold color tone for the shadows and let's very gently bring up the saturation and then i'm going to drop the luminance making the darkest parts of the image just a little darker this way perfect and let me deactivate the split toning to see the image from before to after let's also open up the calibration panel here i want to bring down the blue primary hue a little bit i just like what it does to the colors of this scene and i'm going to bring up the saturation a little bit as well okay then the only thing left to do is the sharpening in the details panel so let's expand the details panel bring down the radius increase the details 
a little bit of masking. I'm holding down the Alt key so we can see where the masking is applied. And I'm going to bring up the sharpening. All right, done. So that's the image after the Lightroom adjustments. What I'm going to do next is to apply a little bit of focus stacking because you can see these flowers in the foreground are out of focus and that's not what I like. So I have shot another image. I'm going to select the second one and then let's click on synchronize. Make sure to check all and hit synchronize. Once this is done, I'm going to do the focus stacking in Photoshop. So right click on and the images when both are selected like this, go to edit in and open as layers in Photoshop. Okay, once we have that, what we need to do next is to align both layers. I'm selecting both of them, then go to edit, choose auto align layers and hit okay. This way we are making sure everything is perfectly aligned and now we can start with the focus stacking, which is really simple for this image. I'm going to hold on the Alt key and click on the layer mask icon, which will create a black layer mask on the layer for the focus on the foreground. Now I'm going to use a brush, set the foreground color to white, and I'm going to brush on the layer mask where I want the layer beneath it to be revealed. That means I'm going to brush over the flower right here with the white brush, and this will reveal the sharp flower from the focus stacking layer. So I'm just going to brush over the foreground a bit like that. And that's how we can nicely do some quick and easy focus stacking. Okay, so that's it for editing this image. I hope this little Lightroom contrast tutorial will be helpful for your images in the future. If you have any questions left, let me know in the comments. And thank you so much for watching this video.